What's good, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another outstanding episode of The Breaks right here on Infinity TV. Happy Friday to all of y'all out there. A day removed from Kobe Bryant Day here in Los Angeles. We'll get into that. We'll get into Breaks University. I got some really cool breaking news for you guys on the culture front. And then, of course, we'll finish up with Fast Break. We might talk about a statue. All that is coming up on your Friday edition with VJ Vernon Husky of The Breaks. And these are the breaks. These are the breaks. You know what it is. Good afternoon. Good Friday, everybody. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, I'm VJ Vernon Husky, the big vanilla funny, the big vanilla poppy, here for your Friday edition of The Breaks on Infinity TV. Happy February 9th and happy Friday to everybody out there as we head into the weekend. Great stuff for you guys lined up today. I'm excited. You can see the energy. I got my Kobe on. Y'all see my Kobe? Because yesterday was Winner. Kobe Bryant Day. There's a statue about 15 minutes from here. I'm going to check out later on. But before we get to that, there's this huge game this weekend. There's, there's some, some football. You guys, there's some football. Oh, that's right. Super Bowl 57 is this weekend. Let me just start by saying, I, I, I want to know if I'm in the minority here. Has this felt like one of the most unclimactic Super Bowls and I, the last decade, last 12 years, like where's the storylines? There's no trash talking. Nobody got caught in trouble. Not yet. Not yet. But ain't nobody get arrested for, for doing something they shouldn't have been doing the Super Bowl weekend. The biggest story has been Cam Newton, my man Cam, making all the rounds at Radio Row and all the shows there. Great piece on Dan Patrick. You guys need to check that out if you haven't watched it yet. And then he was also on First Take talking with Stephen A. Smith <laughs> and Shannon Sharp today about the whole Brock Purdy game manager thing. I, I, we talked about that maybe three episodes ago on the breaks. I told you guys we all manage things in our life. Let's let's put the stupid terms away. Stop making up new definitions for words. As Cat Williams told us on Club Shay Shay, we are not allowed to let liars rewrite history. And that's what y'all do when you rewrite the definition of a word. That's rewriting history. That makes you a liar. We can't have it. But great stuff, man, going on with the Super Bowl. But it's just like I'm looking for the story, right? I'm looking for something I can hinge on and put my, my hat on. And then it dawned on me. This is actually what I want. Because I'm a guy, side stories are cool and all in football and sports. But at the end of the day, I, I want the game. And right now we have the game. And there's no side stories. There's not a lot of trash okay. talking. Vegas thinks it's a close game. Everybody's kind of being humble. We haven't even heard a lot of Taylor Swift stuff. Howie. So I'm like, okay, what the hell's going on? What dimension is this? What metaverse am I living in right now? But like I said, the good football guy spoke to me and said, this is what you want, VJ. This is what you want. You just want football. We don't need the side stories. You know what I'm saying? I even told my wife, I don't know if I'm going to cook a big meal like I normally do for Super Bowl. I can just go get some sandwich stuff, bowl of chips, some guac, some salsa, some chips, some snacks for the kids, a nice fruit and a veggie charcuterie plate with some crackers and some pretzels on it. And I'm good. That's how I feel about the Super Bowl. I just want to watch the game. So let's get into the game. Super Bowl 57. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. The one thing I'm not going to do is I'm not going to bore you guys to death with numbers. I'm not going to bore you guys to death with, oh, this offense is ranked this and this defense is ranked this. And this. by Friday, you guys, and we're two weeks in. We're almost two weeks to the game, right? We were 10, 11 days in uh, from the conference championship games. You guys have heard all of that. I'm not going to regurgitate and repeat what you've already heard. What I decided to do was break the teams down by position. Whoever has the edge, I put a check mark. I think if you really got the edge there, you got two check marks. And that's how I came up with who I think is going to win Super Bowl uh, 57. Shout out to Andy Reid. Listen, man, the guy just could coach football. Listen, it's, I, it, it's amazing what he's done. I believe 10-11 conference championship games he's appeared in five Super Bowls going for his third his third Super Bowl ring with Belichick not getting the job and I'm thinking his career is done because if you didn't hire him now at 70 something why would you hire him next year this happens in sports the league just gets younger guys leagues get younger teams get younger front offices get younger you live long enough everybody in their 20s and 30s trust me you live long enough the coaches you grew up with they're gonna get old somebody's gonna replace them they won't get a job somewhere else, 
and people will move on. That's just the way sports goes with coaches, players, GMs. Owners are the only ones that are around until they can't see straight and walk no more. All old, got to be wheelchair in and out of the stadium to the games. The owners are the only ones stick around forever. Everybody else changes every generation, sometimes up three, four times during your generation. So uh, shout out to Andy Reid. I think he's a top five coach right now. I just want to put that out there. And I love Shanahan. I love what Shanahan does uh, schematically, offensively, getting his guys the ball, putting his players in the best position to do what they do best for the concept of the team and winning. So coaches aside, okay, So because I wrote down coach uh, – Andy Reid gets the check mark, but it's it's not a full check mark. Shanahan's coached in the Super Bowl. He's been in multiple NFC Championship games. He's done it with different quarterbacks now. And Shanahan uh, is right there. Plus, he has a lot of guys off his tree, like Andy Reid had Winner. a lot of guys off his coaching tree, move on and get hooked coaching jobs. So let's start with the quarterback position. I think this one's pretty easy. Brock Purdy's had a very good year. He's Mr. Relevant, MVP, not MVP, all the different talk all year long, game manager, all that stuff. But on the other side, you got 15. You got 1-5. When you got 15, you got 1-5. I'm not a big fan of him. I think he's he, he makes himself very easy to be unlike, un, not like. I think he's an unlikable guy at times. Uh, not as much as Kelsey. He To me, him and Caitlin Clark are the two most unlikable athletes, I think, in America right now. Just my personal opinion. But uh, when you got 15, it's, it's tough, man. It's tough when you got 1-5. That guy can just do things that nobody else can. And if you haven't watched quarterback – on Netflix, you should go watch quarterback on Netflix because it follows him, uh, Marcus Mariota, and and Kirk Cousins last year. Not this past year, the 2023 season, 2022 season. Follows those gentlemen, and you see Pat Mahomes' training regimen. You see how he works on contorting his body, uh, doing different things to be able to make some of these magical passes that we all go, oh, my God, that's so magic. Oh, that's so luck. If you don't like him, people go, oh, that's luck. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's not luck. He trains that way. And as a former athlete, former football player myself, I respect that. And I respect the fact that he wins. You know, so um, best quarterback in the league, in my opinion, best quarterback on the planet right now. I think Lamar Jackson is right there. Uh, we'll talk about his award-winning stuff uh, tomorrow when you tune in on VJ Said What I Said. I'm going to go through the NFL awards. That was uh, awarded out last night at the honor. So, quarterback goes to... Uh, the Kansas City Chiefs, and I gave them two checks because I think he's that much far beyond uh, Brock Purdy. So right now, check-wise, we're two to nothing. Let's Winner. move on to running back. Running back, I gave it to San Francisco. I like Pachanko. Pachanko runs hard. Pachanko runs like he ain't never trying to go back to where he used to live or how he used to live or what his bank account used to look like. He's running like he's trying to run away from something in life. A lot of times when you find out the stories after athletes are done playing, a lot of times, guys, man, will tell you, I just, I just ain't never want to go back to that. That's why I played so hard. That's why I ran so hard. Because you, you, you play good, you get paid good. You know what I'm saying? You know the old saying, you look good, you feel good. If you feel good, you play good. If you play good, they, Winner. Pay, they pay good. Simple as that. So, um, Pachenko, I, I, I love the death. I love a story like him. But I gave two checks to San Francisco because I believe they have the best back in football that you can do so many things with. And... You can line who wants some of Debo up in the backfield. He counts as a running back. So you have a receiver that you can put a running back that can do so many different things. Big guy, physical, fast, breaks tackles. I tell you this, if Kansas City doesn't wrap up, he'll run through arm tackles and score a couple of touchdowns. So I gave running back two checks for the San Francisco 49ers. So now we're at 2-2. We'll move on to receiver. Receiver I also gave two checks to the San Francisco 49ers because just like a running back where you could put who wants some Debo in the backfield, as a receiver, Winner. you could put CMC out in the slot or split a wide out by himself one-on-one -on -one with a corner as a running back now playing receiver. That's something that they do better than Kansas City does better. So because And also you have Brandon Ayuk that I've said within the last, I'd say, maybe three months. I'm falling for this guy. I'm developing a receiver football guy crush on this kid because he runs great routes. He has really great hands. He doesn't feel and smell like Diva. Pretty sure he wants the ball. Pretty sure he wants to score and do his end zone dance and get his money and his endorsements from making himself a brand. I get all of that. But you can smell it from some guys a mile away. You don't get that with him. He feels like a team first guy, and you always need guys like that in the NFL. So at the receiver position, being that you have Ayuk, which I think is the best receiver in the game, 
and you have Debo, who's the most dynamic receiver in the game, and then you also have uh, CMC that you can split out there. I gave them two checks there. So now we're sitting at four to two. O-line, wash. I know the Niners have Trent Williams, but that right side is very weak. And when you look across Kansas City's front, Tooney's break, uh, beating up a little bit. That line is giving up some rushes. They were able to, uh, the Ravens were able to get penetration AFC Championship game against this line, disguising some of their looks. Kyle Van Noy, I listened to an interview he was doing on Colin Cowher, and he spoke about that, how they started fast, but once they settled in in the second quarter, they could confuse their offensive line and beat them, and that's how the Chiefs only ended up scoring 17 points. So I gave that a wash. D-line, I love the right side of Samson's little D-line, but I gave that a wash also, too. I gave this, I gave the slight edge, excuse me, it's a wash, but I gave the slight edge to Kansas City because they have Chris Jones. And being that the Niners' right side is the weak side of the offensive line, I'm pretty sure Spags is going to shift Jones from the middle and shift him more to the outside. So also, linebackers, we can go there. I gave two strikes, uh, two checks for San Francisco. Corners, safety, Head coach, I all gave to Kansas City. Tight end, Kittle, Kelsey, to me that was a wash. So because of my check marks, and because I think of where the teams both sit right now, I think San Francisco is the better team on paper. But I, I'm of the mind that you just have to look at the tape. And when I put the tape on, until you can beat Mahomes and knock him and Andy Reid out, I'm just not going to go against them. It's almost like a period in my life where I got close to just never betting and going against Bill and Brady because they just kept showing me, yeah, they're not going to win it every year, but betting against them makes you look dumb and you're going to lose your money. Years they don't win, you kind of shrug and just go, I don't want their year, but you know they'll be back. Give me Kansas City with a two-point, as a two-point underdog. They'll cover... They'll get the win. I like 27 to 22, 22 odd number, but somebody's going to go for two in a big game when they're down trying to chase points. So that's my prediction for Super Bowl 57. Give me the Chiefs and Pat Mahomes and Andy Reid to get number tres. Uno, dos, tres. 27-22. Y'all sit tight, man. We'll be right back. And when we come back to the breaks of Friday edition here with VJ Vernon Husky, we'll get in the university breaks and I have some breaking coaching news in college football. Y'all sit tight. We'll be right back. Hey everyone, I'm Neko Gumake with the LA Sparks and you are watching Infanity Television. <laughs> A podcast for the fans, by the fans. Dive deep into the topics the other shows miss, raw and uncensored. And he's going to play team ball. His legacy is at stake. Rare, hard-hitting interviews with players, coaches, and you, the super fans. I'm not hating. I'm like, okay, cool. Good. Three championships in five years. He's more than good, bro. Profanity Nation. Listen live or subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Chanel Gwimike, and you're watching Infanity Television. Boom. Shout out Infanity Television. This is Juju Watkins. See y'all. What's good, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen? BJ Vernon Husky here, your Friday edition of The Breaks, the big vanilla funny in the building. And let's get 
right into Breaks University with some breaking news about 35, 40 minutes ago out here in Los Angeles, California, as reported first by Fox Sports. Before I'm over at Fox Sports Radio doing my thing, we get to it first. Uh, Chip Kelly, who is now the former head coach of the UCLA Bruins football program, and that's because he has accepted the job as offensive coordinator for that school south of Michigan down in Ohio that likes nuts and 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 bands with berets and all that other crazy looking stuff down there. Ohio State, he's going to be the new offensive offensive coordinator for the Ohio State Buckeyes and that's because Bill O'Brien who a lot of people either love or don't. I'm up in the air. It's a coin flip. I could care less about the guy. He's never affected Michigan or the Dolphins when he's in the pro, so it doesn't matter to me what he does. He has left as being hired as the offensive coordinator for Ohio State. He has left to take the job at Boston College. The reason why that's big is because the Boston College head coach has now left and will be the offensive coordinator for the Green Bay Packers. And I bring all this up, and this is real good stuff. Also, quick sidebar. UCLA now has an open job. Everything that I'm hearing, the phone call I made, and the text message I got before I got in studio to record today uh, was for a guy that I, from a guy that I trust that's very well connected to the UCLA football program, Zach Charbonnet, who I call games for in high school when he's an Oaks Christian with Kayvon Thibodeau. He uh, was there also, too, so I have some okay. connections there, too, uh, through some of his peeps, is that they want Deshaun Foster, former uh, all Pac-10, Pac-12, excuse me, running back. That was there. He took a job with the Ravens because he figured Chip was out. But there is rumblings there that they want to go uh, and speak to him about coming back, telling the Ravens, hey, look, my bad. I'm sorry, but they want me to be the head of coach there. You always want to be a head coach, right, uh, back there also. But I will give you another name, and this is going to shock some people, but, hey, there's a guy from Southern California that won a couple of national championships from a school here in Los Angeles and was just unceremoniously let go as the head coach of the Seattle Seahawks, and that is Mr. Pete Carroll. Wouldn't that be interesting? I mean, you're 71, you want to coach, nobody's hiring you, right? I know he's got a lot of connections to Trojans. I know he's got a lot of connections to USC. But this right here would be juicy if Pete Carroll, listen for that name, keep an eye out for that name, Pete Carroll have an interest in the UCLA job after coaching USC? What? That would be insane. I would love to see it because it's right here in Los Angeles and see what Pete could come back to college <laughs> and do. Maybe he could right some wrongs of the way he left Reggie Bush holding all the evidence and ran from the NFL. I've always held that against Pete. I think over the last couple of years I've let it go, but I held on to that tight for about a decade because Reggie Bush was my guy. I love me some Reggie Bush. I hate the way they took his Heisman from him and the way they treated him. They allowed Pete back at USC before they allowed Reggie Bush. Back at USC. That that wasn't right at all. But that's the big news. Chip Kelly, former coach now of the UCLA Bruins, will move on to Columbus, Ohio. Very good friends with Ryan Day. I think Ryan Day played for him at University of New Hampshire when Chip Kelly was coaching there. So they have a very close connection, um, uh, really close friends. He's got a great offense. Listen, with everything that's happening with NIL and Portal, Ohio State, damn it, you better win it all. All the trash y'all talking about Michigan, all the stuff I'm hearing from your fan base about the reigning, defending, undisputed 15-0 national champions, the Michigan Wolverines, which you are not. You better mm -mm. win it all next year with all the portal money you're spending and all the great type coaches you're trying to come get. Ryan Day, I get it, baby. You're up against the gun. You done cracked under the gun, Ryan Day. And now, you, hey, listen, go get everybody. I don't give a damn. Michigan's still coming into the horseshoe, and we're still whooping that ass next year for number four in a row. And what you going to say then when you're playing in the Cotton Bowl again next year. So big news, Chip Kelly's leaving UCLA, heading over to uh, Ohio State. Boston College coach left, and he left because he was complaining about NIL. Chip Kelly's also been a guy that's not been a big NIL fan. Guys, you guys need to pay attention to stuff like this. These coaches, they don't want they want to control these kids. They don't want to really let these kids be kids and be young men. They're, they hate that these kids get paid. I can't believe this. That's why Jimmy Burgers is the legend that he is, because he was speaking out about getting these kids some money. Let them get paid. Oh, not only that, the TV revenue you guys are making hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and sometimes billions of dollars give the kids a piece of that they don't even want to let that go they don't even want to give up that's like going to a fast food restaurant with your friend and yeah you can't have a bite of his burger cool mm -mm. you can't have a bite of my burger neither but you can have a handful of these fries and you don't even <laughs> want to give me the fries you selfish mo 
Man, y'all about to almost have me cussing here on the Fantasy TV on the breaks, man. That's it for Breaks University. Y'all sit tight, man. VJ Vernon Husky here on the breaks, and we'll be coming back. Fast break, and probably, in my opinion, the greatest statue in the history of the universe was unveiled yesterday. Y'all sit tight. The breaks on Fantasy TV. Hey everyone, I'm Neko Gumake with the LA Sparks, and you are watching Infanity Television. <laughs> Nation. A podcast for the fans, by the fans. Dive deep into the topics the other shows miss, raw and uncensored. And he's going to play team ball. His legacy is at stake. Rare, hard-hitting interviews with players, coaches, and you, the super fans. I'm not hating. I'm like, okay, cool. Good. Three championships in five years. He's more than good, bro. Profanity Nation. Listen live or subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Chanel Gwimike, and you're watching Infanity Television. Boom. Shout out Infanity Television. This is Juju Watkins. See y'all. Good afternoon, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Friday edition of The Breaks. I'm your Friday host, VJ Vernon Husky, the big vanilla funny and the biggest Kobe Bryant fan walking the planet. And that leads me right into fast breaks. All right, so I'm going to compose myself because it still gets to me like it gets to a lot of people in Los Angeles. Yesterday, February 8th, 24, was deemed Kobe Bryant Day as Phil Jackson, Vanessa, Derek Fisher, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar all stood up uh, at the podium and said speeches, and then they unveiled the Kobe Bryant statue, which was emotional. You could feel the energy through the city. It was a happy day, but it was also still a solemn day. I went and I listened to every interview I possibly could this week. I caught the full interview at 570 a.m. with uh, Jerry West from beginning to end. I listened to that one twice. Uh, listened to all the, the Laker greats, James Worthy, and just to hear everybody talk about Kobe. A lot of times when athletes pass away, we do forget, man. We we do. How many people talk about Ali, right? Let's get real. How many people talk about Derek Thomas? How many people talk about a lot of a lot of great legendary athletes that have passed away? Jim Brown. How many people really keep talking about Jim Brown? Whether you liked Kobe or not, or whether you're on the Jordan side, or whether you're on the LeBron side, or well, all that useless crap sports talk that's taken over the airways in the last 12 years, that's done nothing but make people on internet and Twitter and social media think they know sports and think they can do what we do in this business for a living, it, all, all it's done is divide. And yesterday was a day where it felt like, once again, like the day that faithful Sunday morning, I can remember where I was. I can remember what I had on. I can remember what my plans were that day. What I did every minute, every second, I can remember how I found out and when I found out that Kobe Bryant and those other, other people, not just him, his daughter and those other people that were on that helicopter crashed right north of here um, and, and were all killed. I can remember it like, man, it, it's one of the worst days Outside of my personal life, outside of my my kids or my family or anything like that, my career, other than that, it's the one of the worst days of my life. 
And you can feel it through L.A. and through the world yesterday where people are talking about the murals in Taiwan, China, Japan, France, Spain, South, all the South America countries. I believe, I, I, don't get me wrong, I believe the number is like 639 or something like that. That might just be in L.A. That could not even be the world. That might just be L.A. But even if it is just L.A., can you imagine what's around the world? What Kobe Bryant meant, what the message was that he left with us was truly Mamba mentality. It was truly, you, you, it's going to be hard, but you got to be committed. You got to be passionate. You got to go, 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 go every day, never caring about what people think, never caring about what people say. And we, that's something we all struggle with. Everybody does. That's why we wear certain clothes. That's why we buy certain jewelry. That's why we want to buy a certain car. We want to wear certain sneakers or we want to grab a certain purse or a bag. Whether you admit it or not, we care way too much in today's society about what people think. And we're not focused enough on the ultimate goal in our life and our purpose and what we've been put here to do. Everybody's been put here to do something. Now, whether you do it or not is up to you. Kobe Bryant didn't have hobbies, right? You talk to any legendary player that played with him, any legendary player that was before him, anybody that covered him, any journalist, any TV analyst, any color commentator, play-by-play -play guy, equipment guy, towel boy, they'll all tell you, he didn't have hobbies. He didn't go do, <coughs> excuse me, other things. Basketball was what he did. And then when he finished basketball, what does he do? He writes their basketball and wins an Oscar? It took Leonardo DiCaprio, he was first nominated in 1993. It took him 22 years to win it. Kobe showed up and was like, nah, I got this. I'm going to win. I'm, we're going to write this. I don't know if it's going to win or not, but we're going to write and do this. The people that were on that staff that put that together talked about the 3 a.m. text messages, the 4 a.m. phone calls, the 2.45 a.m., 2.15, 1 o'clock in the morning phone calls. You know who else talked about those phone calls too? Michael Jordan. Talked about Kobe would call him or, or text him or email him. It's like three, four in the morning. He'd be like, hey, dude, boy, go to sleep. Get some rest. Get... He was obsessed with the sport and leaving his mark because he knew that's what he was purpose. That was his purpose here. He talked about Don Young. The, Lamar Odom and Tracy McGrady have spoken about this. Where he talked about, I'm leaving it all on the table. I'm not looking at 65, 70 years old. I'm going to die young. I'm leaving it all on the table. And that message... Excuse me, I just think needs to needs to be ingested by a lot of people, man. And just that message, live for your purpose. And when you leave, you'll be immortalized forever. I put a quick list here of guys I think that are worldly, immortalized athletes in the world. And Kobe's right there with them. Muhammad Ali, I think that goes without saying, right? Heavyweight champion of the world, fought overseas, fought George Foreman when people thought George Foreman was going to kill him. He had people in this camp were scared to go. They were scared to get off the plane. Muhammad Ali is quoted for looking back at them and saying, and then you guys think I'm not going to win. Don't get on. Don't get on this flight. Don't come over here. If you think I'm not going to win this fight, don't get on it. And then of course, uh, civil rights movements, uh, where Muhammad Ali going to prison, sacrificing himself over the Vietnam war, things of that nature, worldly, Michael Jordan, worldly, right? I don't have to recite Michael Jordan stuff. We all know, man, Pelé. And, and football, Pelé, and worldly, right? Tiger Woods, golf is a worldly game. Tiger Woods is probably the most famous uh, athlete, golfer of all time. And then, of course, Kobe. I, that's kind of where the list is for me. Ali, Jordan, Pelé, Kobe, and Tiger. Those are the worldly athletes that will be immortalized forever. We won't ever forget them. I know somebody out there might... Excuse me, thinking of an Olympian, right? You might think of an Olympian. Yeah, but Olympics is every four years. Do we care about Usain Bolt anymore? We're looking at Shakiri Richardson. We're, we're, we're waiting to see what she's going to do in Paris. You know, you, you got, you got, um, um, uh, who's my, who's my gymnast? I, I'm, uh, Simone, Biles, Simone Biles. You got Simone Biles coming back. You, no one's thinking about him. Michael Phelps swam beautifully, won all those women races, won all those races, relays, singles, all those gold medals. Nobody's thinking about him. Sean White, nobody's thinking about him. You know what I'm saying? We can go back to Florence Griffin Joyner, Carl Lewis. And, and no one's thinking about these. They're, 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 you're good for that moment. That's why the Olympics is cool. It's every four years it comes around. Worldly, though, iconically, forever. This man right here, Kobe Bean Bryant, will always have a place in my heart, 
will always have a place in basketball's heart. And from this point forward, we'll always have a 19-foot statue, the biggest one. I love how they did that, sitting outside of Staples. I still call it Staples. Now I call it the Crypt all you want to. The Crypt was that ugly-looking thing from Tales in the Crypt back in the day, man. I'll call it the Crypt Staples. But Kobe Bryant Day, we miss you, man. We love you. Prayers up. You and everybody else that was on that flight today. This has been your Friday edition of The Breaks. I'm VJ Vernon Husky. Don't forget to log in to YouTube. Go to Infinity TV channel. Subscribe. Y'all stay blessed. Kiss and love your hug ones, man. See y'all next Friday. Enjoy the Super Bowl.